One, two, one, two. You're now tuned in to the world famous Wake Up Show. I am DJ King Tech. That's my man DJ Revolution in the background right there, cutting it up, man. But um, my man Frank called me, was like, yo, we got a legend in town. I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce him, man. We got some history yeah, we, we can drop. We got OG Steve LaBelle in the house. Oh, hey, everybody give a round of applause. Y'all don't know who this man yeah. is exact by now. He is a legend in the game. We got to go through his pedigree. So he yes. manages Bone Thugs and Harmony, has managed them for 20 over years. 20, uh, over first of all, thank you for having me. Yes, it's it's an honor to be here. Thank you. You brother. know, uh, you know, Tech, you a legend. Thank DJ you, DJ Revolution, and uh, you know, Frank's the new guy on the block. But you know, shout out Sway. You know, anybody in hip hop knows the Wake Up Show, and if you don't, go Google and do your homework. And R.I.P. the Guru today, eight years. Oh, Damn, wow. today. Damn. Damn. So wow. you know, yeah, I, I come in the game through the late great Jam Master J and Run DMC. I'm from Queens, New York. I'm um, had a 30 year career. I work with Easy e He introduced me to Bone Thugs. I've been with Bone Thugs over 20 years. Currently managing Scott Storch. Worked with Fat Joe and Big Pun, rest in peace. 8-Ball and MJG. Tupac Scoop, The Outlaws. Common Sense. Damn. MOP, The Beat Nuts. 3-6 Mafia. You so know, you put work. Nipsey Hustle on. We working. That's your nickname, yeah, right? Yeah, we working? Yeah, my Instagram <laughs> my nickname is We Working. So let's go to the early days, man. Yes. Of, uh, you, you know, young dude walking around. Trying to figure out what hip hop is, and then you get put on with, with Jam Master J. Like, break that story down. How did y'all meet? What happened? And you know, I just ran into the legend Bosco. So I, I'm gonna shout out to Bay. I worked with Mac oh, Mall. Hey, Bosco back I here. I worked with Mac Mall, Drew Down, and the Loonies too. But yeah. you know, I grew up in Queens, man, and um, I never forget where I come from. And people should never forget where they come from. A lot of people forget that. Um, I started carrying bags through Jam Master J and Run DMC, and you know, I was around Def Jam and Rush Management, the early stages, ear hustling, listening to Russell Simmons and Leo. Cole. Cohen, Hustle, I'd be around EPMD, LL Cool J, Public Enemy, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince and you know just was grinding and just trying to figure out where I can get in and fit in and you know I, I was mentored by Russell Simmons and I feel like everybody should have a mentor. Yeah. Right, right. But, but give me the early days man, like you ran into Jam Master J and you said I want to get come in the game or well, what did he do exactly man, like he just said come on in kid nah, or what? You know I come from Queens, I was raking leaves, shoveling snow, delivering <laughs> newspapers, busting <laughs> well, tables yeah, I, and yeah. you know Run DMC was popping, suck MCs you know was out and um, you know I just got in where I fit in, you know opportunities don't knock a lot you know right. so I didn't know what I was going to do and how I was going to get it but I was just like let me just be around and you, you know as anybody you start as an intern or the homie yeah. or a friend hanging out and doing what you could do. So I would just go on the road and carry bags, drive the van, do whatever I could do to fit in and then take advantage of great opportunities. And Jam Master always told me, take advantage of me in a good way. Yeah. Now, how, how did it hit you when he passed away, man? I mean, it was terrible. I was out in Phoenix, Arizona. I was with Bone Thugs. Uh, Ice Cube was out there, Mac 10. We were doing a concert at the Celebrity Theater. I got that call and you know, we jumped on the first thing, I think the red eye the first thing in the morning and we touched down in you know Queens, went to Jay's mom's house. And the, the aura and the vibe was just really, really bad. And, you know, it was just, it was a terrible loss. Terrible loss, man. Because anybody who met Jam Master Jay know that he was a giver. He was a glue to run DMC. He was that guy. You know, he put on 50. He put on Onyx. He put on J.O. Felony. Right. And, you know, we're going to keep Jam Master Jay's name alive. Salute the DJs. Respect the DJs. Now, how did you run into Easy, and how did he put you on the Bone Thugs? Well, I was working at Relativity Sony. Um, in that time, we had Ruthless was distributed through Relativity Sony and MOP, the Beat Nuts, Fat Joe, uh, the Suave House, you know, Mr. Mike, Tila, South Circle, mm -hmm. 8-Bone MJG, and Hypnotized Minds was there. So I'm a New York guy dealing with the Midwest. We had the Dayton family, and Mac Wall and Drew Down was signed Relativity. So I was working all these projects, the Bay Area, the West Coast, the Midwest, the East. And Easy had Ruthless through uh, Relativity, so he put out his solo albums and the MC Ren solo albums, At Band Clan, which Will I Am was in, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, Bone Thugs. So Easy came in and he brought Bone for the first time, and um, we went to the tunnel, the legendary tunnel in New York City, right. and that's when Easy and Cube had beef. And straight out of Compton, they show that, but they don't show me and Bone Thugs with Easy. We were there. Right. Um, we hung out, we ran the Cube. Could have got ugly. And then Easy was with his two Simone bodyguards of twins, and he had a Pendleton flannel. He's like, I'm gonna walk back to the hotel. And um, I never seen him again. And then uh, he went back to Cali and he passed away. And Bone didn't really know many people at the label, maybe one or two people and me. And then I started AR on the projects and doing the solo projects and the Mo Thug projects. And then after he became their manager, he came to LA and stayed out here. Uh, let me ask you a question about the movie Straight Outta Compton, man. How, I mean, you know, you are OG. How accurate was that in your opinion? 
I feel like 90% was accurate. 90%. What's the what's the ten percent that wasn't your? You know, opinion? from what I heard, you know, Suge never beat up Eazy. Right. Um, but what it did is it showed that Eazy E was the man behind NWA, the money guy, the crip, the street dude, the businessman, the A and R, the guy with the good ear, and it saluted Eazy E because a lot of people forget, you know, our living legends, and that's why I tell people salute people when they're alive. Mm -hmm. And I was watching little kids running around on Instagram and T-shirts straight out of Cleveland, straight out of Atlanta, straight out of this, not really understanding what NWA was or Eazy E was. So when I saw the movie, I was like. I was happy that at least, you know, they showed what Eazy -E was really about. Yeah, he was the man. So when we first came to L.A., actually, um, he took us in. And uh, when all that stuff was going down, he was telling me what was going down. And he never, and I, I never saw him beat up. And he, never, he told me that it's another totally different story. Right. He said when he got there, um, I guess we can talk about it now, man. But he said that, um, you know, he was with two, two guys. And Shook just pulled out a gun and put it right on the table facing him. And he was like, I didn't even flinch. I was like, okay, so what you going to do, shoot sure me? Easy had a few guns on yeah, him. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what he said. He goes, sorry, man, so you're going to shoot me. My man's going to shoot you. He's going to shoot him. So we're going to be a bunch of dead dudes, or we're going to make some money. Yeah. You know, that's what he said. So I don't know if he, if he got beat down like that or not, man. But anyway, rest in peace, Easy e man. I want to play a, a couple of joints, right? Just some 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 run DMC, maybe some classics, Suck man. MCs. Suck MCs. MCs yeah. because we were just talking. My Adidas because we we're wearing Adidas. That was my introduction to hip hop. I was about ten years old, walking to a um a a, a, a boombox store in San Francisco, downtown San Francisco, and they were playing Suck MCs. And I think it was the first time I heard hip hop with just a kick and a snare and a clap and a hit. I think it was a hit or something. And from what I heard. They were supposed to go back in the studio and lay down some more instruments and run or or, or, or was it jam? Somebody said, no, no, this is cool the way right. it is. Yeah, rest in peace, Larry Smith. I think he produced that and Larry Smith just passed away. He did a lot of Run DMC production back in the days. Do you know about that story that they were supposed to add some more music yeah, to yeah. it? And then, and then I think uh, maybe Russell or somebody was like, no, nah, this is it. Simplicity <laughs> simplicity is the key. So that was it was real simple. You so know? was that the, the actual first record that had no like music? It was just a kick and a snare and a hat uh, at that time? I would think so and you know Red, that's you that, so? that's hip hop to me and there was a few like mean. uh Kurt, like Curtis Blow records that well, see that had music like in that. it some of them didn't though the ones like you know like the earlier Curtis Blow stuff had had music in it, it was like you know bands and shit but then right. when he started he exactly when he was getting in the studio with Larry Smith and like doing all that other stuff when it was like profile days and right. shit that's when it had like kicks and snares like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde that kind of stuff right very minimal stripped down shit right. it was right. just like those old school drum machines like oversaturated on those 24 track tapes so in honor of steve man let's play a classic and you heard man. what he said dr jekyll and mr hyde shout out andre harrell wow yeah taking y'all back man